All right, folks, in this presentation, I'm going to explain why the moon um, has phases. Here is an outline of the standards and what you're expected to know. So if you like to pause and review, please do. Here are some key terms that um, I'm gonna use during this presentation. So if you'd like to pause and summarize or review them before we begin or um, at the end, um, I highly recommend you do so. So the main idea of what's going on is basically objects in the solar system are in constant motion, including the Earth. And the reason why the moon appears to have phases um, from Earth is because it is revolving around the Earth and its position around the Earth as it's orbiting um, changes the amount of light that we see reflecting off the moon. So I'm gonna go into depth of why the moon appears to change shape like it does and um, over the course of a month. So the moon is rotating on its axis as it is orbiting around the Earth. And this motion causes phenomenon to occur on Earth, including the phases of the moon. Uh, one really important fact about the moon is that it is rotating and revolving at approximately the same rate. So what that means is that as the moon is orbiting the Earth, it's turning at approximately the same period of time, which means we only see one side of the moon, which is an extraordinary uh, you know, phenomenon. So because it's turning or rotating and revolving at the same rate in approximately a month, we only ever see one side of the moon. So the moon has phases because, well, first of all, the moon does not produce its own light. So that's a really important detail. Uh, the moon appears to have phases because the light reflected off the moon back to Earth causes it to appear illuminated differently as it orbits the Earth. So you can see in this diagram, the sunlight is bouncing off the moon, reflecting off the moon and going to Earth. So Earth would see a different illuminated part of the moon as it continues to orbit around Earth. So the changes in the position as the moon orbits the Earth, the light that reflects off the moon makes it appear to have um, different phases. And that's why the moon appears to change shape as it orbits the Earth every single month. And it has everything to do with the light being reflected off the moon and, it, and what's observed from Earth. So as you can see here, you know, the light that bounces off the moon back to Earth is going to cause it to appear to change shape as it orbits the Earth each month. So, for example, in this position, we don't really see anything. Here we see most of the dark. Here we see half and half. Here we see most illuminated. Here we see fully illuminated. Here we see most illuminated. Here we see half and half. Here we see, you know, less of the moon illuminated. So um, one important detail is you see here that the moon is always half illuminated from the from space so in space the moon and earth are always half illuminated unless there's an eclipse and but what earth actually sees is a different amount of light reflected back to it as it orbits the earth so part of what we're going to learn is uh the actual name of the various phases so um what i know is that if it's half illuminated it's a quarter moon if it's anything less than half illuminated, it's a crescent. If it's anything more than half illuminated, it would be considered a gibbous. Now, if the right side of the moon is illuminated, it's always waxing, which means that the moon will gradually become brighter and brighter as the light is returning and becoming more of a full moon phase. And then when the moon is illuminated on the left side, it's waning. And what that means is that it's going from a full moon more and more to uh, less illuminated to a new moon and the light is actually leaving. So when the left side's illuminated, it's waning. When the right side's illuminated, it's waxing. So for example here, um, I believe less than half of this moon is illuminated. So this would be a waxing crescent. 
And over here, since I think more than half of the moon is illuminated, this would become a, or this would be a waning gibbous. So let's practice that. Um, this is a new moon phase where the non-illuminated part of the moon is facing Earth. So this is when um, the moon is directly between the Earth and the um, sun. So the illuminated part is actually on the other side of the moon. We The light isn't reflecting towards Earth. This is um, a, a new moon phase. As the moon continues to orbit, now we see more of an illuminated part of the moon. So what I know is that since the right side is illuminated, it's waxing. And since it's less than half illuminated, it's a crescent. Now, approximately half of this moon is illuminated. And since it's illuminated on the right side, this would be a first quarter moon because it's going, it's becoming more illuminated as it goes towards a full moon. So uh, this moon is in a waxing phase, but we call it a first quarter moon because it's exactly, you know, half illuminated to Earth. As the moon continues to wax or become more illuminated, um, this is, again, the right side illuminated, so that makes it waxing. And since it's more than half illuminated, it's called a gibbous, so waxing gibbous. Eventually, it becomes a full moon phase when the moon is directly behind the Earth or behind the Earth. And all of the light that is reflecting off the moon goes to Earth, so it appears fully illuminated to us. Now, in this case, you see the left side of the moon is illuminated, so that means it's waning. And since more than half of it is illuminated, it is a gibbous. And it's going to be gradually get darker as it goes towards a new moon phase in its orbit. Here, approximately half the moon is illuminated. Um, and the left side is illuminated, so it's waning. And in this case, since the left side is illuminated, it's last quarter. And that is also called a third quarter moon. So I remember this as left side illuminated, last. Now, in this case, the left side of it is illuminated. It's less than half illuminated. So since the left side is illuminated, it's waning. And since less than half of it is illuminated, it is a crescent. So these are the main phases of the moon that you're going to need to, to study and know. And eventually, we're going to have to get good at analyzing diagrams such as this. So first of all, make sure that you are aware of where the sun light is coming from. In this diagram, I like how it shows that the moon is always half illuminated from outer space. So in outer space, the moon and the Earth are always half illuminated, unless there's an eclipse. Now, what's difficult about moon phases is you always have to be, you know, thinking about from Earth's perspective. So I put the eye here because we're no longer looking at it from outside like this picture showing you. We now have to analyze this diagram from Earth's point of view. So an easy one to start with is the new moon phase. So from here, from Earth, it would appear to be completely dark to us, and that's called a new moon phase. And as the moon continues to orbit, from here, we would see mostly the dark part of the moon, but we would see a little bit of uh, an illuminated part on the right side, which is why this is a waxing crescent. We see just a little bit of light here, and we see mostly dark there. As the moon continues to orbit, here we see half and half. We see the right side is illuminated, which would make this a first quarter, and the left side here is not illuminated. As the moon continues to orbit, here from Earth's perspective, we would see mostly an illuminated phase of the moon, which is a little bit of dark on the left, which is why we see this phase here, which is called a waxing gibbous. More than half is illuminated. So here the moon is waxing, it's getting brighter, brighter, brighter until it's completely full. So when the moon is located, you know, behind the earth, we see an entire illuminated face of the moon. All of those sunlight is reflecting off the moon to earth. We call that a full moon. As the moon continues to orbit, again, we see mostly an illuminated part of the moon, just a little bit of dark, but you kind of have to turn around and you'll see that the left side is actually illuminated here if you put yourself in Earth's perspective. And the right side is actually dark, not the outer space view. So here the left side is mostly illuminated like it is here. And since the left side is illuminated, it's uh, waning. And it's most more than half illuminated, which would make it a gibbous. 
as the moon continues to orbit. Again, you got to kind of turn yourself around from Earth's perspective. We're no longer looking here where the right side's illuminated here. You almost turn around and now the left side's illuminated, which is why this picture's here like this. The left is illuminated, which makes it um, waning and it's left is last. So since it's a quarter moon, this is a last quarter moon or it's also called a third quarter moon. The moon continues to orbit. Here we're mostly looking at dark. It's mostly not illuminated from Earth's point of view. We would see a little bit of light on the left side. And since it's the left side illuminated, that would be a um, waning. And since it's less than half illuminated, it's a crescent. So really understanding the moon phases is all about Earth's perspective. You know, a lot of the diagrams will show you from an outer space perspective. So in order to be really good at naming the phases, you have to always be, what is Earth, what is Earth actually seeing in that position? And um, this animation is great because it's showing the moon always half illuminated here, which is true. And over here, it's showing you what it would appear like from Earth. So in order to get good at understanding the moon phases, you always got to be considering what is it from Earth's perspective as it's orbiting. So diagrams like this are what we got to get good at. Notice that the sun is on the other side here. So you got to get good at analyzing these diagrams from the sun being on any side. You also have to pay close attention to which way the moon is orbiting because many models will have the moon orbiting differently. So what I like about this diagram is you see the moon is always half illuminated from outer space. So this is what the moon would always appear like from outer space, just like the Earth. But as the moon orbits the Earth over the course of a month, what it appears to be like from Earth changes. So, you know, from here, Earth would always see, you know, the dark part of the moon. So that's why it's a new moon phase. And since we're orbiting this way, what I see is the Earth would look at a mostly non-illuminated part of the moon, and we would see a little bit of light on the right side if you use Earth's perspective and kind of turn around a little bit. So right side illuminated is waxing. And since we are going towards a full moon, all of these phases must be waxing. You know, right, right, right side illuminated <clears throat> is waxing. And once you're at a full moon, the moon will gradually become darker, darker, darker until it's a new moon. So these are all waning, 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 waning until it's completely waned or dark. And notice that the left sides are all illuminated here. Because from Earth's perspective here, the left side's illuminated and mostly illuminated. Here it's half and half, left side illuminated. From here, you would see the left side illuminated, but we would be looking at mostly the dark part of the moon. So when you're going towards a full moon, waxing, and when you're going from a full moon towards a new moon, they're all waning. So these are the diagrams that I need you to get really good at analyzing. Always pay close attention to what side the sun is coming from and which direction the moon is orbiting. So if I tried to analyze this diagram, I would first look at those elements. And then what I would see is from Earth's perspective here, we would see a completely dark phase of the moon from Earth's perspective, which would make this a new moon. And then here, since we're orbiting this way, we would be looking at a mostly dark phase of the moon with a little bit of light on the right side. So this would be a waxing crescent and here we would see half and half, the right side's lit up, which would mean it's first quarter, and we're waxing, going towards a full moon. From Earth's perspective here, we would see mostly an illuminated part of the moon on the right side, so this would be a waxing gibbous. And here, from Earth's perspective, we would see an entire illuminated part of the moon, which would make this full. And then these phases would be waning, and the left side would be illuminated. So here you turn yourself around. Now the left side's illuminated, and we would see mostly an illuminated part of the moon, which would make this waning gibbous. And here, again, you got to turn yourself around, and now the left side would be illuminated, even though from outer space it doesn't look like that. But from Earth, if you kind of turn around, you would see that your the left-hand side is illuminated, which would make this last quarter. And we're again, we're waning towards new moon. Here, we would see mostly the dark, part of the moon with a little bit of light on the left side, which would make this a waning crescent. And we would wane all the way to a new moon. And we would here we would wax all the way to a full moon. But you got to be always ready for diagrams where the sun is on a different side. So now the phases would be, you know, different. So pay close attention to what direction the sunlight's coming from. Pay close 
um, pay close attention to which way the moon is orbiting because that will change the phases. So in this case, if you're always thinking about Earth's perspective, it's a little bit easier. So again, I like this diagram because it always shows the moon half illuminated from outer space. But understanding the moon phases is all about Earth's perspective. So from Earth's perspective right here, position number one would be a new moon phase. And here you would see since from Earth's perspective, it, we would see mostly dark. So that would be a waxing, since we're going towards full moon, a waxing crescent. And the right side would be illuminated. Here would be first quarter. And here would be a waxing gibbous, since we're looking at a mostly illuminated part of the moon. And here would be full moon. Now we're going to start waning, and the left side's illuminated. So notice the left side's illuminated here. We would see mostly illuminated, which would be a waning gibbous. Here, the left side's illuminated, and we see half and half. That'd be last quarter. Here, the Earth would be seeing a mostly dark part of the moon with a little bit of light on the left side, and we're going towards a new moon. This would be a waning crescent. So in conclusion, the moon is in motion. It's rotating on its axis, and it's revolving around the Earth as the Earth is also revolving around the sun. Um, an amazing detail is that the moon is rotating and revolving at approximately the same rate, which is about 29 and a half days, which is why we only see one side of the moon. Um, the moon has phases because of the light that reflects off the moon back to Earth. And as the moon is orbiting the Earth, the amount of light that reflects back to Earth changes. And that's why the moon appears to have phases and change shape from Earth's perspective. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for listening.